<laughs> Artifacts before, Monday. I'll Call say me. it again, and I'll put a point on it. Our nursing homes are going to be f***ing lit, son. <laughs> and welcome back to another Linux Teamcast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and that's you at home helping us form, you know him, Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, I had a interesting thing that led to me buying a hello straw. Aha. It likes it. <laughs> it's like one okay, of those bunch it's, of... it's just like a bendy straw, crazy straw. It's me, dude. It's stainless steel stabby ah. straw. Home defense straw. <laughs> For when you want to exsanguinate your home invaders. <laughs> no, you just want to drink their brains like a fucking Capri Sun. Right? It's like the brain bug. Yeah. Uh earlier this week we were talking about this in the pre pre we showing. Somebody brought up a game that I remember like there was a massive campaign for it way back in the day. Uh, it was called ReCore. Like, whatever happened to them? Like, like, Microsoft was going to make that like this universe franchise thing. Like, they were just throwing at it. It was like the premiere of the Microsoft game, whatever thing that year. For the X-Bone, yeah, it was exclusive like, for a while. What, what happened to it? Like, where did that even go? Is it available on PC? And uh, we were looking in the After Get Done with Track Mania last night. Thanks, everybody, who showed up for that. I went to Steam, and I'm like, oh, it is on Steam. That's neat. It's like $3 right now. It's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good game. Uh, it came out in 2018. It is done on Unity, which was like my first jaw dropper. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you can do this on Unity? It's, it's that level of fidelity to it. Like, it's a AAA game for three bucks. So if you like puzzle platforming, exploration in the desert, and robot upgrades and robo puppers that you can upgrade to kill other robo things that are not puppers check it out for the price right now i was like but i was curious what killed it and then we looked up it was only available it was like locked it only ran on windows 10 and you could only get it through the microsoft game store yeah that that's that, that, for success that, <laughs> that's a that sentence <laughs> it clearly was to the point of like I, what happened to that game <laughs> Perfectly serviceable game that was killed by Microsoft being Microsoft. Also, earlier this week, uh, the Street Fighter VI local multiplayer, you can't play it online, this version, beta is out. A uh, run that didn't want to run on Proton Experimental, I dialed it back to Proton 8. No problems, no complaints. Played around with it, and everybody, you got my respect if you can play a fighting game on a standard Xbox or uh, PlayStation controller man because my wiring in my brain is from six button mega drive controller hard you know light medium hard three on top three on bottom didn't translate to this and i really tried i'm like how do i and i was like no so like, just go buy a gamepad i'm like no fun game though it's been a long time since i played a uh fighting game how about you jordan what was the last fighting game that you played I think the last time I like seriously sat down and played a fighting game was that Strider. We were playing Mortal Kombat 10, I want to say, because 11 hadn't come out. Uh, so that's, that's been a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing much has happened this week. No, no rodent extraction. Oh, someone, someone did take the box though. Um, <laughs> someone took the, the free raccoon. Yeah. Someone, someone took, okay, here, hold, hold on. Do it, do it. Can I, can I scroll? Can I find this thing real quickly? <laughs> <laughs> um yes i can here 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 it is uh here oh we we, ac we actually got to the front page of reddit on our on our toronto for that we posted oh, nice. <laughs> yeah uh here here, here we, so here here we go here's here's here is the reddit posts uh in, in discord <laughs> but yeah so we we extracted the raccoon and we we call we called animal control and they're like yeah no it's gonna be a two-week wait for for someone to come by and pick it up so just like Leave it in a bag in front of uh, in front of your house, uh, and so you know <laughs> we 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 set it up in a box. We we decided to label it to make it clear what was what was what was on the inside, um, and uh, the next day, so someone took it. We 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 looked out the window. We're like, wow, someone actually took us up on 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 this offer. But what happened was they took it. They took it like maybe a block up the street. Exacto knifed open the box. Looked inside, like, wait a realized, minute. <laughs> realized <laughs> they're like, wait, I don't know what I expected here. Ew. And then just left it. <laughs> but it's not on our property anymore. So we're just like, 
some, cool someone story, took, yeah hey. right yeah. so that 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 is the conclusion to the dead raccoon arc this is gonna make the strangest children's book how about you pedro I've just been, uh, every chance that I've, uh, had this week, I've been playing, um, Aliens Left for Dead, because I like that game, that game tickles the side of my brain that I didn't know I had. Oh uh, uh, man, did you get to play the, uh, cloud save, cloud save game? Uh, yeah, the, I got to, uh, experience what happens when one of your cloud saves fucks off and you lose 12 hours of progress, and then you contact both the game's support and the, um... Steam support, and they both they both tell you, no, nah, sorry, we can't recover that. Mm-hmm. Well, then, I suppose I'll just go and F myself, then. <laughs> oh, spe- speaking of, I gotta thank Not a Duck for giving me a free copy of Aliens Fire Team Elite. He's like, yeah, I got a free one, Jordan, you want it? Like, yeah, sure, why not? So, <laughs> hey, why not, man? No, uh, what? So, did you just go back and keep playing it, though? Uh, yeah, I was already it, past the okay. refund window because I'd already played more than two hours. Here's the real some question. Some cost, some cost, some cost. Does it not have any save on it locally? Uh, no, uh, see, if your save disappears from the Steam cloud, your local save gets poofed. It, it and I didn't realize directory. that, so when I turned on this box, the local save on here got poofed. <laughs> Valve, you need to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that sounds like something easy enough. My dumb ass could run a check on. It, it, and like the Valve person is someone called Chris, uh, Chris. probably a bot, uh, it just said, no, we don't recover. Uh, it's like, you didn't say you couldn't. It just means you won't. We, well, right. we talked okay. about that open source project that like fucks with cloud saves and creates like cloud save backs up, backups so, where you can like version them. So I think like this is, this is where a tool like that is super useful. Yeah. It's necessary because if this is what happens when you lose a cloud save, well, then, um, yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. Our horse will forever be in the clouds. No. <laughs> in, in, in the clouds with Macho Man Randy Savage? You can't take it's him out. It's been that, that a long time, yeah. Yeah, it's the steam. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we got this week? We got a big update. I think Jordan was the uh, first one in our Discord earlier this week that started the the end result was Strider digging through Linux Gamecast Weekly podcast from three years ago. I was wondering what that was about. Yeah, I, I was I, yeah. too, and I was doing a little research on it and without having to bug anybody. It is like, oh, it, it, we had to redefine what wushy was, and the uh, <laughs> Strider was having a field day with that one. Yes, <laughs> it, it was the level of like looking at it and going. I ain't got time for that bullshit. Um, <laughs> so, uh, also, if you don't know, um, all of our stuff is archived at uh, archive.org. There's Linux Gamecast with like the big hundred episode blocks in it. And if you ever want to go download it, it might take a year, but it, it's there. <laughs> Update this week. And Jordan says, Oh, it's real wishy. And I had just played something on Valve and I'd shut, I'd come in here to do something and I want to get done. I just cut everything off. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll play with it maybe tomorrow and I'll come back. And sure enough, the latest Steam beta update. Uh, man, my first thought, my first reaction, it looks a little bit different, but you immediately uh, try to scroll down as one does when you launch something and you realize like, hey, somebody evolves learning how to make a Chromium-based user interface. And that shit's janky. Also, we're the test subjects. Uh, Pedro, you can back me up on uh, the 30-second oh, yeah. pause when you scroll sometimes. Yeah, no, uh, when you first launch Steam, for 30 seconds, uh, you'll see the page. Everything is loaded. You can't click on anything. You can't scroll anywhere. It's like, okay. Uh, the, the way I found to work around it is to right-click the tray icon and go to the library, for example. If it's on the store page, go to the library, and then it starts responding. That needs fix. It, it is a beta, but yeah, that needs fixing. Now, Pedro, it, I but, need to ask you, is that better or worse than having to go for, into the page and back out of the page and into the page to get rid of the white screen of death? Yeah, there, there, is, no <laughs> white, there is no white screen anymore, which is, which is very nice. Which we've been know. dealing with for the past month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, I guess I just don't use Steam for the first 30 seconds it runs because like, I, I was scrolling through it and I didn't really run into any issues. When I, when I said wishy, it was like, oh, hardware acceleration, like those animations actually like show up as opposed to like one frame at a time or they just kind of pop in Pedro what the hell is this oh no what do I do <laughs> it's a to-do that, list I mean uh, <laughs> that is showing yeah. the new pin a window functionality for the um 
The overlay the, the, in Elden the, Ring. The new overlay, the new overlay is fucking dope, man. <laughs> like it's all minimalistic. You, it doesn't like immediately show your friends list to everyone when you mm-hmm. you're streaming and you're like, I need to shift tab to like change something. But I like and, yeah, the notes. They have a little, that, that's yeah, nice. The the, the, <laughs> the notes thing is super handy. I, I really like. Yeah, that. that that alone is going to make just having paper close to my desk completely obsolete for me. <laughs> Oh, here's another thing that I noticed uh, when I jumped into the beta for a minute was like all of my screenshots on the Steam page is just like broken images. Like, oh, hell, did I lose all that? <laughs> no, it just doesn't display in the client correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, uh, it, it, you need to open update it. And also then... makes it possible to enable hardware acceleration on Mac and Linux versions of Steam, bringing them up Yay. to yes, your placebo button is gone. It actually <laughs> does something. All this time, Valve, all this time you had people believing you had <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the acceleration real... on Linux. Yeah, the... Listen, the real hardware acceleration was the friends we made along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, it, play with it. Be prepared. There do be dragons. You know, usually like in a beta, I run into problems. If you don't have any problems with it, keep using it. And uh, yeah, there you go. No, no hardware acceleration for this one, though. No. Uh, yeah, so Open Steam Client is a neat little project from uh, 20% Rendered. And it seeks to use the Steam libraries like LibSteam to re-implement a minimalistic Steam UI that can download and install and launch games. Uh, it keeps it tri- tries to keep it under 70 megabytes, which uh, seems really useful if you're on like ARM systems or like memory limited systems where you just need to like pull game files. Um, it probably won't get you VAC banned, sort of, kind of, not really. Maybe, maybe. probably it will. Um, so you you use at your own peril. Definitely don't use this concurrently with the actual Steam client. They don't play nice with each other. That's the other thing. But this is just neat. Um, hopefully, hopefully Valve doesn't pull a Nintendo and just decide to fucking take a giant shit on this. Because I think like there there is merit for for a project like this. Mm. No, I absolutely am um, taking a look at it. Like a hey, look, finally a sixty four bit version of Steam. Well, wonders <laughs> never cease. Uh, that made me uh, particularly happy. And. Uh, Get pour one out for our brothers and sisters over there in uh, Redmond land. Uh, there is no Windows version of this planned, and um, I like this idea, though. It just launches games. So, dude says he's looking for somebody to help make a logo. There you go. You're welcome, LGC Cares. Uh, links in the show notes. But in future versions, like, yeah, we can add the uh, friends list. And like, no, 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 no. Just, 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 let's just keep it as a game launcher. Mm-hmm. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to open and launch games. We don't need, uh, I don't need a store. I don't need anything. I just launch game. That's it. And to what Jordan was saying about like Vacman and stuff like that, he's like, this, you know, it's open source except for two libraries that you need for Steam to do the Steam thing. And it's just throwing some hooks into that. So what Shorten Should, shouldn't, yeah. but yeah, ca- ca- not caveat emptor, right? right? Yeah, right. yeah. You, you never it know. will pull the VAC libraries. It will use the actual ones, but it's still a third-party client, so. No, no, Synthal. Yeah. There's no trading cards involved. They won't send the Pinkertons here. <laughs> but but how will I mine gems or whatever the hell those things are? Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, Valve seriously just needs to give this person a buttload of money and make this official, because I tried this on um, the Toshiba NB550 netbook, this is significantly faster. Now, getting logged in is finicky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do warn. There's very much uh, oh, in the uh, to-dos. Windows support. Oh. Supports. <laughs> Supports. One Supports. of the to-dos is very much login is a bit janky. Yeah, that's, that's an understatement. But y- you'll eventually figure it out. It's made by Arch Linux intuitive. for Arch Linux. <laughs> Don't use it on Gamer OS or it just won't work. I mean, there's a Debian harsh. package, so. Like, it, whatever. Just, yeah. it, it ships in a snap. That's fine. And I completely get the idea, man. Like, sometimes you just want the thing that does the thing really well, as opposed mm-hmm. to, like, I don't know, not scrolling. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not bitter about that. Not even a little bit. Oh, man. That's going to do it for Steam News this week. But a couple of new games to talk about, and the first one is Gravity Circuit. Now, typically... Typically, when we see some hipster pixel, you know, platformers and all that, I'm like, I, I, I don't know, always with a lot of suspicion. But I was just looking at the video on this, I'm like, this kind of looks right. My first thought was like, this is Bionic Comegatroid Vania. Uh, it's a uh, hashtag not Mega Man X. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so it definitely gets some Mega Man X vibes. 
decided to try it. I mean, it's got a reasonable size color palette on it. You know, you can think like a SNES level. Pixel art's 100% legit. Background music's legit. It's got the upgrades. It's got grappling hooks. And um, instead of shooting the pew-pews all the time, you got like special moves, man, like pile drivers that you could do, which adds to the challenge. I had a good time with it because there is a demo. The plan release is Q2 2023 on this. Windows only demo, but it runs under Proton just fine. It's not a problem. And um, yeah, I was really pleased to play this. The pixels were solid and the controls, most importantly, are incredibly authentic. Like it was tight. It felt like I was playing a NES level of uh, controller, like good type of control, you know, like Super Mario 3 control. No, it, it, it is 200 megabytes in size, so it's not, not quite Super Nintendo like accurate, but you know, we, we can forgive it. It looks the part. It's, it's it does. Good. It's got a robot that... nurse. No, I'm not <laughs> Uh, the one Mega Man that I played was uh, to any extent was uh, X3 on the Saturn, and I looked at the videos like, yeah, no, that that hashtag not Mega Man right there. Uh, but yeah, it is. It's not my thing. Um, but hey, yeah, I'll just try help everybody at home. Uh, <laughs> I tried it. It's not Mega Man. <laughs> that would just think more like Bionic Commando. Does it look like Mega Man? You know what, Pedro? Here's the thing: just close your eyes when you're playing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just do, just do the uh, the blind punch out thing, right? Right. No, no. <laughs> bl- bl- blind two player punch pa- punch out with one person on each side of the controller. Now, Pedro, this next game, man, talk about screams, Mega Man. Look at this. Uh, no, that screams more ziggurat to me. But uh, it's no, Legend Vale. This is Skyrim. I had a sword like that in Skyrim. This is totally Skyrim, uh, Pedro. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll give you this Skyrim. Depending, uh, that's the one thing that I couldn't figure out just from the store page. Uh, is what kind of uh, a progression are we talking here? Is this like an arena shooter, ziggurat style, painkiller style, or is it just man? We more did of not a spend linear... a lot of money on that lava, did we? <laughs> no, no. Uh, like a more traditional linear style of level progression. It just happens to only have enemies here and there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's one that I too want to try at some point because there is no demo available on this one, but it is all the terribly expensive and the um, developer. Uh, uh, what what did he say? There we go. Uh, the first person slasher uh, offering fast paced melee combat mixed with tactical use of spells and poppers. dashing around your enemies. It, developed it's, by it's ex awesome. Ubisoft employee Gone Solo Dev. So there's some you know industry talent there and uh, a lot of positive reviews so there's there's that it's very inexpensive at 799 yep. mm-hmm. it, it it really does give me like some hexen meets elder scrolls because like hexen you usually only had like the one weapon and this gives you like the the sword in one hand and the spell in the other Do- mm-hmm. does need the elusive tuvok gpu if you look at the system requirements it needs vulcan with a c which is going to be tricky <laughs> <in those laughs> video drivers. challenging but um yeah it's it's revolutionizing the fps genre where S means stabber now. Stab, First person stab. stabber. <laughs> yeah, no, it, there's like uh, painkiller arena style shooters could use yeah. a flagship slasher. So yeah, let's go. A flagship <laughs> slasher. All right, there's uh, a new a, tag. A flasher? No, flasher. wait. Never mind. <laughs> Ignore it. Move on. Move on. All right. Uh, the next team we're talking about this week, 100% Mega Man, right, Pedro? Uh, you know, you and could it's, make it's the like argument every right there. It's I'm like going, every I'm, I'm going for a hat trick if I can get it looks like Mega Man three times, man. Come on. But yeah, no, it is. This is in the new game section, but it's not a new game exactly. Uh, it's Tesla Grad. You, if you've been playing video games on Linux and you've been following the humble indie bundles uh, since two or three, you you know Tesla Grad. This is the remastered version. Uh, it's um being published by modus games and it is available for i'm guessing around ten dollars it's eight pounds 38 here so it's probably 10 ish and yeah it's tesla grad but better right here Ooh. it's like you're reading it right off the store page tesla grad but better uh platformer game uh when did this come out this april i mean the graphics look decent when i first think about like a uh, tesla uh what was that last top down one we played that was really good and, um tesla versus lovecraft yeah i think that one was kind of fun i never played the original uh tesla grad i think we probably have copies of it yeah it's 999 evil when it does handstands and um yeah uh 
However, however they, they did give it a big visual update. They do say, though, if you scroll down, uh, UHD on Linux uh, is probably not going to be 60 frames a second. You probably want to keep it at 1080p. Uh, that, 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 is, that, is, that is a little unfortunate to hear, but... I know. mean, on a 1060, yeah, you're probably not going to do 4K 60 for, FPS anyway. For, 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 <laughs> for, for, for fucking Tesla grad? For a 2D platformer? Really? Come on. Well, I, I mean, mean, on a modern day engine where nothing gets optimized and it's an old game, so thing. why bother? Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, recommend it. I think what this is saying is don't expect to run this thing at UHD on an RX 470. Maybe not. Or a 1060. With, yes. With, with, with a Ryzen 5 1700. What? Yeah. And let's face it, if you're, if you're living that 470 or 1060 life, you, you don't. You, don't put you shit probably in have UHD. a 1080p screen, yeah, and you, that's great. You, you know how these things go, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right uh up next we got a game update and it's our favorite murder legos we got new besiege blocks uh they have an update and it has axles it has nom nom uh, axles. blocks you mean yeah. like uh foley's yeah axel foley <laughs> or axel axel rose axel f's yeah axel 11 <laughs> Comes with like a bear trap nom nom thing if you want to make murder turtle. That right. looks dope as fuck, by the oh, way. Oh, it absolutely like, does. My immediate thought was like, that's kind of tame, though. That that that, <laughs> that is that is that is old George the fucking turtle. Um, yeah, they uh, they also added um, more a uh, more efficient explosions. Explosions were pretty CP or GPU intensive. They have uh, refactored them, so now it is a little less of uh, a little less performance draining. What kaiju nightmare does this require? When I see this, man, it's like this pivot joint spin. Yeah. Like this is mm -hmm. this is a little crazy, man. Like <laughs> that's how transformers are born. <laughs> I, I think that's what they want you to build. There's also apparently they've gotten rid of some blood transfer issue as well. I don't know what that <laughs> says. It just, it just in the in the patch notes are like blood transfer issue is fixed. So I assume whatever blood is going on, there's going to be more of it. So we can talk about um, block fifty five can get skins. Oh, finally, we have a oh, wheel inflation like, strider or slider yeah. slider strider. Um, yeah, blood, blood transfer issue. So yeah, maybe other stuff. They fixed the multiplayer errors caused by missing network block now. If you don't know about Besiege, this game should be the equivalent of like Minecraft with a goatee. It's not because they had stagnated too long in early access. Because hey, I, I get it. I get it. Um, we need like what we were talking about in the pre pre super shows. And uh, I, I want because the multiplayer version works as you kind of just sit around and everybody builds their machine and do like a little battle royale or you do like the jousting type thing like Jordan mm -hmm. and I played with that I want one where you build the machine and it's the kaiju and you get like everybody else we can get like 8-15 people in to play as the townsfolks trying to defend their town with like different weapons I think Pedro was like yeah let's set up you know some uh, cross bolts and stuff like that yeah like to do the asymmetric multiplayer type of situation one person builds the big war machine no. Everyone else needs to defend against it. That could uh, work really well. It would change the dynamic and the fact that like, if you play like against the CPU right now, the AI is just yeah. hobble and bounce towards thing. Yeah, it's, they, it's, they it's, go it's for you. Physics, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I don't know. It, it, it would be. It would have to like require like an entirely separate game. But I, you know, I, I kind of wish more more developers would experiment with that. Where like game this game server supports input from two different types of games, and you can play like Besiege, and then you can also play like Warcraft. But like the enemies you're fighting in Warcraft are yeah, like some more more interesting crossplay. I think is like a thing that is underexplored in gaming. So or I mean, even if you had like the ground forces, because there's also all the airships and stuff. Like your town yeah. could have an airship too for air support. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fucking somebody today up right now. Like, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so, someone's, well, you know what? You don't have to credit us for it because we didn't no, say you can have that thing. one. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. on you, man. Coming up next, old people, they're coming for your games. Run yeah. away. And your Z1s. Uh, right. Hello. The news, they will be coming. Don't you worry. We had some technical difficulties in the uh, intermission here, but uh, hopefully they're sorted. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, before we do, though, we do need to thank you, everyone who puts up with our shenanigans. Uh, and, you know, after 10 something years of doing this, the biggest, this is the bestest, it's the most um, we keep doing it. 
the we, weakest we doing persistentist. It is. The, the, the wickiest? Yes. The wickiest? <laughs> just, and I mean, just it, like it is wiki- weekly, so it's the weakest. No, and ju- and well, just like Wikipedia. Just Why like don't Wikipedia. We have a wiki? Because <laughs> we're not important enough. But just like Wikipedia, we're going to no, beg uh, you for we, money. We, we can make our own wiki. We can. You, it's really easy to host. You can, if you want to fund that, head on over to patreon.com. Can, can have like like a, put the sea monster up top. Like, <laughs> listen, listen you, you, you can do whatever you want with your wiki, uh-huh. man. It's w- wiki then, Wikipedia. Wiki, wiki wild? Yeah, if you, if you, if you want to be like Clive Brown Frog. Wait a minute, like, is, is there dot wild deal me? What, d- d- dot wilds? So I can do a wiki wiki dot wild? Uh, I, I don't know. Wiki wiki wild. Is, 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 is there a dot LD you could do like dot WI dot LD? I'm sure that shit's taken if it yeah. is, right? All right, what, whatever. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Give us money. Get in our Discord channel. You can get to it by subbing to us on Patreon or on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. We got to thank Pedal Happy for uh, becoming our latest uh, Patreon. You get some cool stuff like access to the pre pre super season where we talk about all sorts of random crap. Varies from week to week. Sometimes it's debugging mail servers. Sometimes it is complaining about how expensive shit is. Um, it's all good stuff. You can RSVP to game streams. I I really need your help with fucking stream brigade on Thursday. That game is kicking our ass. Are you guys getting squad wiped? Oh, we are we are getting hardcore squad wiped, and it's like right at the last phase of a boss fight too. So like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> It's it's either get more people or get good, and I don't think we can get good. Uh, Ven does track mania on Tuesdays and Thursdays, though, so you can tune in for that. You can so participate as well. That's at uh, filthy.linuxgamecast.com. Oh, yeah, you can just head over to the web zone. There's like a filthy casual thing. You can just look, look at it. Yeah. Like, hey, look, there we are. Linux and laps Tuesdays and Fridays. It doesn't matter. If you like puzzle games, you'll definitely enjoy track mania squared. 11-year-old game runs on a calculator, so no worries about having to upgrade your system. And yeah, we get together 14 new maps each and every week, and uh, we have a little contest on Friday where we hand out some free games for the person who falls off the track the least. Speaking of free games, I gotta thank, uh, once again, Not a Duck for sending me a copy of uh, Ilian's Fireteam Elite. If you want to buy some stuff, we got, uh, well, if you want to buy yourself some stuff first, head on over to store.nextgamecast.com and get yourself a t-shirt, get yourself a tote bag, get yourself some stickers to cover all of those in, and then get yourself a hoodie because you're freezing cold. I don't know. I, I like that the Freak 1999 is uh, listed as organic tote bag, so it's probably not venomous. Pro- probably. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. Now, now I just want like space 1999, but it's all skeletons. Uh, we got Hell Elks. We got lady shirts. We got dude shirts. We got unisex shirts. Cover your filthy body with them. We got uh, Wish Zones as well. If you head over to LinuxGameCast.com, put your mouse over the support button. You can buy me a KVM switcher or a Steam Dock or a, a, an SD card. You can buy Pedro some, I don't, I don't know, lockpicks, <laughs> a, a Saturn scooter, controller, also an SD card, uh, an air, and an, an air, air fryer. fryer. <laughs> get, get, get Ben some green shit. See, I, I want always... to imagine that Pedro is making something out of this top row, so he's got a, uh, he's going to hook a Saturn <laughs> controller up to the air fryer, but he's going to yeah. upgrade the RAM and improve yes, the cooling. I'm going to put a RAM and a chunky, but very small height-wise CPU um, heat sink. What, what type is that? Is that like an off-brand? Yeah, it is. Um, uh, no, uh, ID cooling, uh, they're known for server um, coolers. Oh, so it's going to be isn't loud. It? No, no, not, not no really, Amazon because basics. that's a 120 mil fan. <laughs> It's as a somebody, 120 mil fan. As, but... as somebody who has the chunkier knock to it, it's going to be loud, Pedro. <laughs> Doesn't spin fast enough. I think the max speed on that is like 1300 or 1400 uh, RPM, it, so it's not uh, going to be that loud. It, it, I, good, I, let's just say the 6500G in rectangle is not running in max uh, clocks. And of course, we got one for the studio. If you want to end up on this wall back here, that is always behind me and our fine upstanding animals. That's our studio wish zone. Uh, nothing cool like air fryers, but we are. I'm slowly saying that we're going to be building an epic, epic PC. Got Smurf boxes and other really radically expensive keyboards and things like <laughs> soundproof curtains. We thank you for your support. Come say hi in Discord. You get a chance. Uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, what do I got coming up next? Probably got some stuff. Uh, oh, I'm going to be doing um, kind of like a history of Firewire because... Earlier this week, Tack, and you've heard me talk about Tack, he maintains the Elsa stack for Firewire. Uh, he's going to be taking over the entire 1394 stack for the Linux kernel. He's like, I'm going to give you Linux support until 2030, not 30, 2029. And then what? Well, we got six years to figure that out. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no Barring, more Firewire for you. 
fuck off. Barring a Raptor bus. Well, I mean, it's, it was just in maintenance mode, man. It didn't have an active maintainer. I mean, fire, let's face it, firewire's done. We're not getting any new firewire technology. It's just like, hey, make sure it works. And it's going to be interesting to see what he does with that. Now that I know we got at least six years, so I want to finish out a video of like, why it might be a good idea if you are, why and why not a firewire interface would make perfect sense for you. So stay tuned for that. We appreciate your support, your support, but we need to talk about another AMD CPU that we finally got some details on. Sultan does that one. Zen 4 RDNA 3 coming to handhelds. Don't worry, we're going to be talking about that ASUS thing in a minute. But this is the new bit. You know, we, we had the new stuff that's in your Steam decks. Uh, what version, what was that chip called? Uh, it was the Aerith, the Jupiter. Ah. Uh, Ju Jupiter was the, uh, the SOC, Aerith was the GPU or something like that. Yeah. Something like that, Fam AMD family names. Good luck. <laughs> Look at this bad boy. Uh, this thing's performant too. Now, the first thing that stuck, struck me right here, I mean, these things have a maximum TDP, 30 watts, minimum of 15, 16 megs of L3 cache, 8 megs of L2, 12 RDNA, 3 CUs on the extreme awesome. version, and 4 on the regular. Uh, that, that's, a bit, that's a bit of a performance cut. If <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, the, that's less than half. That's, that's a third. Look at this, yeah. though. Like, we're talking 1080p. <laughs> Upscaled 720 with Radiant Super Resolution. This thing's uh, cranking out like 98.3 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mm. I mean, it's getting 70 in Red Dead 2. Render that 720p, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what it's just with, said. With, 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 uh, with the FSR. <laughs> no, no, th I mean, that, that's, that's good for a mobile system. The, I guess the, the real question is like, how no, many Jordan, seconds of trash. I expect 144 4K <laughs> at uh, 14 watts. Well, yeah, but again, how many seconds of battery life can you expect from the CPU running at That's that capacity? That's not important to my bullshit right. argument. Of course not. <laughs> Let's talk about full native HD uh, 1080p. Middle Earth, Shadow of Hordor. This thing, it's getting 60 with the extreme. Uh, 51 with the regular unleaded. What do we have? Uh, Red Dead 47, Forza, that's a current game. G GTA is pretty even, like, uh, five, 5 FPS drop is pretty minimal, but, like... Considering and, how old it is, it makes sense. Yeah, same same <laughs> with uh, Dota 2. But, yeah, other, other than that, it's looking like you probably want to go for the extreme, unless you're yeah. real... Yeah. <laughs> Are we excited about this, though? I, I'm... Uh. I'm I mean, I'm I'm excited to see, like, more more innovation in, the, in like, the handheld console space. Um, like low power chips, yeah, uh, I, not necessarily it, for handheld consoles, but even for AMD laptops. just came out and just dropped this out of nowhere. They were like, by the way, we're working yeah. on this. <laughs> well, uh, there was the whole, you know, uh, Asus uh, handheld uh, that they were, you know, being very cagey about, oh, it's a custom um, Ryzen chip that uh, AMD created just for us. As it turns out, not the case. Well, listen, <laughs> they, they gave enough money to make it. They just didn't give them enough money to not also sell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, the Fox um, on YouTube, he's done a lot of the um, Steam Deck customization and power tuning and everything uh, on YouTube. And he did some extrapolating from the, uh, the numbers on the uh, Z1 Extreme. And apparently the... 7840U is going to be very similar to what the Z1 is uh, seemingly performing as or promising. And uh, the, I think it's the INS 2S, uh, INEO 2S, INS, um, Anus. that's going to have the 7840 Ryzen APU on it. It's going to be so, interesting, you know, especially if we might be able to get like a deck refresh with something like this. Now, my first thought one of these is like, here's what I want. I want some like Raspberry Pi size module, 15 watt Raspberry Pi little Or some like framework boards or something. Yeah, like. Uh, and like 150. That's what I want. What, what I'll fucking buy is like $200 ones though. Like if you <laughs> g give me something with that much horsepower on it for like 200 bucks where I can, where you can make your own little console home theater type it, thing. Nope. So they probably box. can't reach like the credit card size for like Raspberry Pis, but something like the Latte Panda, uh, Panda, that's about two Raspberry Pis stuck together on the long side. Mm -hmm. That could work. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if it's gonna be sitting under a TV, you really don't need it to be like super sexy looking. Just gonna... Yeah, it doesn't need to be that small. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, full full tower. 
<laughs> yeah, full, full, full tower motherboard about like yay big. Yes, we call we call this one the compensator. <laughs> all right. Uh, since this all started with what we were talking about last week, and ASUS was releasing that ROG um, prototype, and I'm going to put prototype in air quotes around that because this is this has been turned into like a stealth marketing campaign for this fucking device. I think this device is in boxes, getting ready to go out, Pedro. Announced in uh, announced on April first, and as it turns out, it's going to be an actual thing, and thus the leaks have begun. Uh, and supposedly, there was a new egg. Um, leaked page that showed the high-end rog ally as being 699 which you know that 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 is very competitive that's just slightly above the uh highest price steam deck for the uh, fancy screen and if best buy not new i I just tried to help man i'm just saving that comment (laughs) from will actually uh yeah that was Best Buy, Newegg, it's the ones that I don't usually look at because when it comes to the UK, they have nothing, comparatively speaking, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, it is looking, if that turns out to be true and the price is that, it does seem to make a very good argument for the price to performance when compared to the high-end Steam Deck, because the high-end Steam Deck, it's still the exact same uh, SoC as on the low end, it just has a bigger SSD and an anti-glare screen. So, it, it, it may be competition. We shall see. <laughs> I mean, yeah. when you look at it, man, it's $51 more than the 512 gig Steam Deck. And this is what we talked about last week. I'm like, it doesn't compete with the Steam Deck that's fucking 800 bucks. Like, it doesn't. I mean, it's got to be, I said, like, $399. let us do $399. they are like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's go ahead and just make this thing a little bit more expensive than the 512 deck. But with good reason, because it's a lot more powerful mm-hmm. than your standard Steam Deck. However, $700 is still 1.16470. Keep that in mind, and uh, you're going to be stuck using Windows with a controller, which is a controller interface, which is a fucking nightmare experience. Anybody who knows what I'm talking about or has witnessed other people <laughs> attempting to use anything outside of like maybe a big picture on Steam, you're anyone here. who bought an INEO, it's going to be challenging. <laughs> now, which leads me back to saying, hey man, it'd be nice if Steam would just get off the fucking pot and I understand why Steam might not want to do it right now immediately uh, and release an ISO, a general ISO for these devices that other vendors can go, hmm, all right, we can do this because Asus is really trimming down here, man, because there's not much profit margin in this. Like, It's not like they're sitting making bank on it and that's what I want to see. I want to see Valve to release that so we can have competition for the Steam Deck because Valve Valve's going to make money either way. Valve makes money on the Steam Deck when you buy stuff on the Steam Store, and they still make money from the Steam Store when they buy it on any other device. So you understand why they, they don't have any problems like doing this. I want them to actually do it. But I think one of the big things that a lot of people are glossing over, how easy, what, what's the repairability score going to be on the Asus ROG compared the- to the Steam Deck, where they went out and like, hey, we've worked with iFixit to give you repairable parts, and here's how to take it apart and fix everything. And yeah, they gave I, you all the specs and the 3D models as that you could print your own to scale Steam yeah, Deck. I, I thing. don't see I don't see Asus, Asus doing not that. Doing that. No. But like <laughs> raw, but here here's the other thing too. Raw hardware performance is only one thing. Um but this is like let's be real, this is gonna be an edge case for most uh game uh developers like making a Windows game, right? The the one of the main value adds of Steam is the tight control that Valve can exert over the environment in which most of these games run. Asus doesn't have the brain power or the infrastructure to do that with their model. They don't have that tight control over the operating system. So while the hardware may be capable of running these games faster, is it going to be a good experience? Are you going to have decent battery life? Um, is is like the on die throttling just going to like completely kill performance? What about weird hardware quirks? We we've seen uh, we've seen Valve like straight up fix issues with like bad DX12 implementations, right? That kind of stuff. Elden Ring really was possible. working better on Linux on release than on it's not, Windows. It's not, not really possible on on the uh, on the Asus side. But again, if if Valve starts marketing SteamOS as a legitimate competitor, then may, maybe this opens up that alley. I don't know. It's, I mean, I think it does, and it depends on how Asus markets this. If they if they come out like, hey, this is a Steam Deck competitor, the Steam Deck is clearly a console first. Yes, is how it's marketed. And like, this is your gaming console. It's being sold to people who don't know what the hell a Linux is. Now, if Asus comes out and says, no, this is a fully portable, higher-end laptop replacement, that also has controllers built into it. 
Because this thing also has that uh, moon dock that they have. They have their own standard for plugging in eGPUs, which is like mm-hmm. faster than Thunderbolt. Yeah, it, it's effectively like the old um, external dock connectors that some Dell the, and we, we were talking about the, 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 the PC media shit that like yeah, yeah. you could like plug in a video card. I yeah, I do it's remember those old PCI, docks had like a PCI, PCI slot. PCI. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, this thing's gonna have their proprietary connector for that, and I think it's like PCI Express Gen five by four or something like that. Um, more than which enough. gives you sixteen gigabytes per second. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we've seen that you don't really need like the full the full by 16 speed to like take good advantage of an eg and here's the so. thing back to my saying that like release an iso that people can start playing with because what do you say to like buying one of these and putting steam os on it <laughs> that's going to be the ideal scenario that's right? going to be the dream thing yeah <laughs> I mean, it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, someone's gonna load a hollow ISO the moment they get their hands on that. <laughs> and help out, help out, help. Come on, come on, <laughs> and, and give us that desktop version so we can make our little home desktop uh, access real easy. Maybe we can ask Vermicelli for some help reverse engineering it. No, uh, or use Chimera OS, which now that it has the um, that was a segue, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> contra contra not any contra old school contra classic contra nest contra which was like 120 something kilobytes in size allegedly because i went to the nintendo store and got a copy uh last night an annotated disassembly with supplemental materials to the contra nes game and i love it this stuff makes me so happy when i see it this is not the first game that it's been done to but I was like, my first was like, we're going to be breaking out the CA-65 in order to get this built. And like, which I did. Didn't manage to get it built, but anything that is, you know, a bite for bite that like builds and matches like they did with Mario 64, granted this is a much smaller project, that Nintendo legally cannot do anything about, I wanted to give it a mention. Stop them from trying. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, they can try all they want. And like, I was like, nope, this falls under, this is completely reverse engineered. And Jordan, you dug into it a little more than I did. I was just trying to get the damn thing to compile. Yeah. So this is, this is actually based off of uh, someone else named Trax's work because what they were doing was they were, they were essentially making Contra mods that you had to patch the ROM at a time to like improve enemy AI and do all sorts of crap. So this is, this is the full decompilation and like, documentation of the uh, of the original contra rom so as far as i can tell what the build script does is it will take the og rom decompile it and then recompile a new rom that is a bite for bite match for the original which does which kind of sounds like you've gone in a big circle but like that's actually really impressive because you've produced a set of code and now you've turned you have a mechanism of converting that code back into the original binary that will work and now you have full understanding of how the entire thing is built this is just really fucking cool. I'd lo- you lo- you love to see like just deep dives into like old game code, and this is like this is like the key of game preservation. This is sort of knowledge. This is sort of knowledge that will be lost to the ages if people aren't trying to extract this. Because like the Capcom people aren't going to fucking tell you this. Konami's not going to tell you this kind of information. Yeah, and Nintendo would very much like for you to not be able to play their game. So. <laughs> Now this is uh, a legit, you know, it's got a build SH script. I like dug through that and I was looking at that and I'm like, ah, maybe I can get this thing working. Uh, but it also will compile with or without PowerShell on Windows if, but, you know, again, you're going to need the compiler suite, the CC65 for your 6502 assembly. Mm-hmm. So if you're an old hat at that, maybe you want to help out. Uh, the link to this will be in the show notes. And again, you do need, you got to go to the Nintendo store dot online dot whatever and buy a copy dot dot, dot (laughs) nes Mm -hmm. mike's shed (laughs) good news jordan we finally they finally got carmageddon ported to linux they finally did penguins (laughs) yeah no if you remember that video yeah that's uh (laughs) open disdain to the people who give you money yeah, yeah. Uh, literally pissing on the people who wanted to play your game. But uh, Death Race, Death Race, not the the movie. Uh, certainly not the um, um, Jason Statham movie, unfortunately. But it is an open source, or the start of an open source reimplementation and reverse engineering of uh, the original Carmageddon. The 
they, they opened their uh, readme.md with, want to chat? We are in the uh, hashtag death race channel on the Carmageddon Discord server. Fuck you and fuck Stainless for what they did with the uh, the Linux port on the Carmageddon Kickstarter. But yeah, no, they say that they're about 80%, uh, 80% of the functions are there. It's still not entirely playable, obviously, but there's a lot of progress that's already been made. And it uses SDL too. It's very nice. It's very good. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, it. I look forward to it. I absolutely will try it. I just will not join stainless discords for obvious reasons. That's right, everybody. Everybody who's sitting there right now going, I wonder if Pedro's going to join. Nobody <laughs> was doing that. No, well, everyone's like, yay, we don't have to hang out with Pedro. <laughs> Woo! Uh, check this out. I started going down this rabbit hole. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I wonder if anybody's ever played around with that. Because my first thought was like, did the original Carmageddon, because I, I man, I was playing this on real hardware, not on my retro gaming computer. No, I was playing it because I'm old as hell. Um, <laughs> on DOS, I had a friend that had this game. I don't have it personally. And I couldn't remember if it was one or two that had IPX networking. I still don't have an answer on that, but this led me to OpenC1, which apparently is another uh, bit of work being done with the Carmageddon, the 1997 classic to... But no, I don't that know. One, that yeah. one's on XNA, so you should be able to get it running with FNA, maybe. Theoretically. Like, I think this <laughs> one is, uh, it uses, uh, it's got NVIDIA physics support. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, chunky. physics is open source now, the old yeah. one, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I think this is more of a remake, I want to say, than, I don't know. I'd have to go look into it a bit more. I just wanted to give it a mention, too. There'll be another link in the, uh. I mean, who doesn't want to play? Uh, I don't even know if this works on Linux. Is there a GitHub page? <sighs> yeah. Source on GitHub. Hmm. Let's see. My, uh. <laughs> did, did, did I see an <laughs> .sh file scroll up? Did you? Uh, oh, no, it's an SLN. SLN. Never mind. Yeah. I see an SLN. Yeah, <laughs> Visual, <laughs> Visual <laughs> Studio. <laughs> Blue words. Yeah, so, yeah, this is, this is the one from the dark well, side. Well, hold on. Last updated 12 years ago. I mean, so, yeah, 2014. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. So there might, it is. Might, 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 might be. Might be a little bit. Just, I just, want uh, Carmageddon one with multiplayer support, please. It'll be easy. That'd be really nice. Just open yeah. one of the because you could edit uh, the Carmageddon uh, physics and all that because it was just a bunch of text files. Mm. Like you could just go in and put in bullshit variables and it would cause white weight physics. Everything would get screwed up. So you better save those files. We reinstalled that game a lot. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Speaking of being old. Oh, yes. Uh, this next story brought to you by the bi-weekly tra LGC Track Mania streams. This is from AARP.org. You might be asking, why are we talking about the AARP? It's because most of our audience are fucking old fogies. And this is a lovely little article from them about how uh, 50 plus gamers are a big force in the Wait, uh, electronics and technology like 50 market. plus gamers or 50? Plus age, age 50 plus gamers and over. Okay. No, no, 50, it's gamers and then you add 50. No, no, no. What no, no, would no. you rather just, fight? Just, just, just 50 gamers. Just 50 gamers. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, th this, this whole article goes on about like, oh yeah, old people are absolutely playing video games. And there was a study done about like how they're playing and who they're playing with and what they're playing it on. Uh, and it makes sense. I mean, like if you were born in the early to mid seventies, you're oh, probably around fifty like now. Some fifty plus gamers still, still use a Wii. Wii bowling, man. Shame they love them. that shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, seventies. Uh, you're growing up with like Ataris, ColecoVisions, and like arcades, like the heyday of the arcade. So yeah, you probably fall into this uh, bracket. And people still kind of think like it's novel that uh, like video games are the sort of universal form of entertainment, but it's very much cross generational now. My, my 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 wife and my and her kid have like conversations about Pokemon that came out when I was a kid. Time goes by. Um, they do say though, uh, fifty percent of these include mobile gamers, but those still do count. Those are still games. Um, and it's 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 just it's just interesting, right? Like um, we a lot a lot of people still seem seem to think of video games as like kid stuff or for people who have who lack emotional maturity but no video games are for everyone everyone should be able to play them and stop their brains from rotting yeah there, there's still a bit of a stigma around video games being toys but hey 
if you're in your 50s and maybe you've worked yourself to a cushy enough job that you can just work from home and make a decent amount of money doing it, and with the Rona event that happened kind of making that more common, you probably have some money to spend, and video games are a good way to uh, keep your brain active. So, you know, and as Jordan mentions, yeah, the, the mobile gaming is huge, and everyone has a phone, so chances are there's something I know, uh, well, Nori's not 50, not even close, but uh, she she plays a lot of mobile games. That's, yeah, she likes that particular genre, the uh, hidden object games. <laughs> Artifacts before, Monday. I'll <laughs> say it again, and I'll put a point on it. Our nursing homes are going to be fucking lit, son. <laughs> Whatever laser six connection we're using, the oh. our death match. Yes. So I, I I brought this up with uh, with someone I was chatting with this week because he he's graduating from a program and he's doing like I senior. He's graduating from a nursing home. No, well he's he's gonna be he's gonna that be working sucks, at a nursing man. home. They kind of Benjamin a Button. For <laughs> yeah, he's, he's gonna be working in a nursing home. And I brought this up. I'm like, hey, you know, more more old people than ever are playing video games. So like, you can just like cruise up in the retirement home, play some Goldeneye with these guys, and stomp them because they're all decrepit and you still have working thumbs. <laughs> he's gonna end up getting wrecked. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I don't care how old you are. If you got like 16 hours a day to dedicate. <laughs> yeah. And you gotta they're, think they're, about it. There's something to be said for mastery, yeah. A couple of things through this. Uh, you know, why are people playing them? Most people just have fun. Well, you know, mm-hmm. going through their surveys, uh, stay mentally sharp. You know, that's number three after relaxing. So why everybody else plays these games? And, you know, 73% are playing puzzle and logic games. Track Mania. Tuesdays and Fridays, you elderly people like me. <laughs> Keep your brain. Think. Puzzle games. Like, stuff that makes your... And I also don't agree that you know, people are saying, well, there's not games targeted towards me. Like, what the, what, yeah, how do you target an age group? I mean, outside of like, like Pokemon, how do you, uh, how do you target an age group? Come on. You got three-year-olds and you got Jordan. Like, yep. There's, there's some, there's a Delta there. Like <laughs> you can find with so many good games. I don't care if you're on mobile. I don't care if you're on PC, you're playing on console. There's something for everybody. And it does yep. keep you sharp. It keeps you thinking anything's better than just vegging out in front of a TV and receive only mode. Indeed. Speaking of logic puzzles, coming up next, we really, really toast our brains by shooting lasers at them. Pew. (laughs) Yeah, we're throwing chairs at Photon Engineer. (laughs) No time to update your light bulbs firmware. It's time for the chair acquisition where we take a game and then we wait for the firmware update to install. And then after it does, we run it on a bunch of Linux distributions with some varying hardware. And then we give it a final score based on lawn chairs. One chair means that it's great. It's not great. Two chairs means that it's average. Three chairs means it's pretty good. Four chairs means that's great. Super great. I mean it this time. This week, we're taking a look at Photon Engineer, developed by Grégory Petit, a.k.a. Deer Vision. It's done on the open source Urchin engine, like completely bespoke. Um, you can pick it up for about 20 bucks. US, what is it? Master laser manipulation and environmental control in the sci-fi puzzle game. Unleash your creativity and uncover the secrets of the mysterious platforms that have suddenly appeared near Jupiter. I've got to thank Gregory for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. And I get to go first this time. Ooh. So on Fedora 38, 37, goddammit, still haven't updated yet. Yet 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti launches out of the box, holds 120 plus FPS at UHD. Hey, look, it has some graphical options. Uh, speaking of, they're pretty basic 3D graphics, which is fine because it's a puzzle game. As long as the puzzle pieces are clear and good, we're gravy. The soundtrack is okay, but I would have probably would have preferred like a lighter mixing, like a bit of a lighter touch. It gets a little intense and it's like, I gotta, I gotta turn this down so I can focus on the really hard puzzles. Uh, no cloud saves, no controller support. Uh, you can absolutely play this on the Steam Deck if you set up the controls uh, via Steam input. I did not go through that because I could not be asked. So I played this mostly on PC. Fun? Is it fun? Yeah, it's pretty fun. My, my Brian hurts, man. That's, that's the sound of a good puzzle game. The, uh, the, it's a mix and match of like the, the sliding block puzzles that you're seeing right now, if you're watching the video version, which are actually pretty easy. And then just the fucking ball bustingly hard laser puzzles that really, really make you take advantage of the full, the full three dimensional space. Ah, Pedro just, Pedro just finished this one. Yeah, this is, uh, this one is a bit of a, um, this one's a bit of a pisser. Challenge number five is where, yeah, it just gets like fucking hard. They're just like, oh, you, you, have you figured out the mechanics yet? Well, too fucking bad. <laughs> Figure it out. It's all multi-phase puzzles 
where you need to figure out the ways to make the make the most out of the absolute bare minimum of resources. And it's not it's very much not like a set it and forget it. You are actively like messing and like refactoring your puzzle as time goes on. Yeah, it's 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 pretty fun. It has a pretty simple setup, but yeah, you will you will be suffering in pain uh, quite a bit uh, because yeah, there is uh, there's de there's definitely some stuff to uh, think about with this game. I'm gonna give it three cheers. I had fun with it. It's a good game. On the um, Ryzen Seven Fifty Eight Hundred X Three D and the RX Sixty Seven Hundred XE. It launches out of the box uh, on the Steam Deck. It also launches out of the box. There is no controller support advertised incorrectly, so it doesn't work terribly well. Uh, but it does um, It does default if you install it on the Steam Deck to uh, mouse and keyboard mode, so very good job at that. Uh, it holds 144 at 2560 by 1440, uh, and it respects whatever refresh uh, rate settings uh, if you're using either VSync or um, the built-in frame limiter, because hey, it, at it, at this uh, in this day and age, I shouldn't be um, celebrating the fact that that does work properly. But the fact of the matter is, we get so many games that just outright ignore those, or the VSync or the frame li limiter don't do anything. That it's it's refreshing to see a game that yes, it actually does. Uh, but it is, um, the graphics, as you can see that there are, they're not here to blow your mind. They're here to convey that what you need to, uh, puzzle your way into progressively more and more elaborate space stations. The, the soundtrack actually made me open the credits, uh, because I immediately recognized two of the background tracks. One of them, I went, wait a second. I heard this track on a YouTube video today. Yep. Kevin McLeod is omnipresent this, these days. And as for the fun. Do you like the uh, Sokoban style um, block sliding puzzles? Well, um, did you like the um, laser puzzles in the Talos Principle? Did you maybe uh, wish that those laser puzzles in the Talos Principle had any actual challenge rather than artificially padding the time needed to complete them with random explodey mind bullshit? I think you'll like uh, Proton Engineer uh, from level five, this one that's currently on video right now. It, the puzzles become deceptive. Um, some will lead you to overcomplicate things from the start and you fuck yourself over, and others uh, seem so very simple, which then turns out to not be the case at all. I, I, it got me like some missed vibes, from especially like Uru where you had the movement tutorial and nothing else, everything you have to sort of play the game, figure out, interact with things, figure it out yourself. I like that. I like that very much. What I don't like is uh, that stupid little notification box that shows up front and center, taking up like a fifth of the screen. Put that in a corner, please. That That's where most games usually put it. There's a very good reason for that. It's already on a timer, so that's good but not in the middle. Don't cover the things that I'm looking at. I, you know, your game world, don't cover that with a text box. Put it in the corner, please. But hey, outside of that, I did very much enjoy it, so three chairs. <laughs> did you uh, normally get these graphical glitches? Uh, only when recording. I need to check my OBS setting. Yeah, it sounds like an OBS thing now. <laughs> Blazing. No, it, that 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 doesn't show up in game. Just the recording. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's not like an OBS issue. Yeah. Years, yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, boys, and girls, on the 3060 over here in Debian Funland, Debian testing, soon to be Debian 12. Well, you know, the 3060 was able to crank out, you know, somewhere in the mid 70s with everything on 11 at 2160p. And I mean, hey, it should. Not a lot going on here visually, which is all right. It does detect the controller, but, you know, that's kind of down to steam. Like, hey, I see a controller there. Then you move it and it's all spastic. And like, oh, no, 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 no. I think my first clue was like when the cursor starts moving. When you hit the uh, analog stick, you're like, oh, we're not even going to mess with that. Maybe we will. And you try it again. There's no settings to dial that down end game. So keyboard and mouse it is. And you know what? They get the job done. Completely serviceable. And yeah, that menu, it needs some work. Some important options on that menu are on the left side. Some important on the bottom right hand side. Get that together. Get that together. And block rotation. If my one serious complaint about this is kind of like 
whittling something until it shows up in that because I'm still even after playing an hour of this game not a hundred percent on the block rotation I just keep clicking and eventually it does what I tell it to I like sometimes like spatial like hover block let me rotate it and drop it into the place I want so if I click 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 I think this one rotates this way this way and eventually a door opens and you scream with joy but last week Last week we had to chat about this game when we brought it up. We kind of all agreed, man. You know, it's like Talos on a budget. And 60 minutes into this game, yeah, it is. I mean, the puzzle mechanic consists of basically two things. Block plus lasers. And then you get to play that slidey puzzle game that you saw earlier to unlock containers holding other things. And the puzzles, they're all right. But they're just puzzles. That you're missing the what you would get in Portal, what you might get in Talos. More, more of like Portal to egg you on to the next puzzle of just like the overlord, the dungeon master talking smack to you, handing out little bits of lore. But hey, that's that. I, I, I really want that like constant, like the fuck's going on here? Like slowly delivered to me. You don't get that. What do you get in this? You get more puzzle. And uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine if that's your thing. If you're just looking for straight up puzzles and if that's all you care about, well-made puzzles. Yeah, give this a look. Um, outside of that, like, block rotation mechanic, everything in here is a nice little brain scratcher. But if you're looking for some story to go along with that, you want to look some elsewhere, man, just keep on rolling. I'd say consider making this a demo, because this is, uh, 2049. It's not outrageous for it is, but I need to stretch the imagination, but this is one of those things you're either going to get, you know, I walked into this thinking, I, I got this, I didn't got this. I'm going to go ahead and say two chairs. I want to open this up to discussion because I had to crib off Pedro's notes. <laughs> Even on the second map, I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I, I knew I, there was like some mechanic that hadn't clicked in my brain yet. And when I saw Pedro, like, oh, you got to use this block to keep this door open and I didn't have a problem. I was fine. It was just smooth sailing from then on. Smooth as it could be. This puzzle was a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, how did you guys feel? Did it, you immediately like click with everything? Do you think it needs what? What does it need? What's missing? I agree with you that like the the actual rotation mechanic. Uh, we were talking about this in the previous super shows and could definitely use some refining. Yes, yeah, some kind of floating blocky stuff. Make it a little easier to um to actually um like to actually like get the get the blocks in position. Um, uh, yeah the the one the one thing that I didn't really understand at first was like the green block, and it's like, oh, you just need to put this in here so that the puzzle. Completes. It just like, needs to be in line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I, I kind of wish that block would do maybe a little bit more as opposed to just like, hey, you just need to figure out a way to. It's because I said so. Block. Yeah. <laughs> um. What about the purple block? The 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 purple block is interesting. It lets you combine beams, and it lets you um, and it, it kind of acts as like a, a blue box in and of itself. Okay, Which is are, are we talking about the purple block or the dark purple block? Uh, is there a dark purple block? Oh yeah, baby. Uh, uh, <laughs> I got blocks for days. Okay, yeah. Oh, the, the, okay. The, the, that, 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 that bottom one's more like magenta than purple, but yeah, uh, it's, it's the top one, the top purple block. Yeah. yeah so there, there's no, like I didn't a lot get more. To that. No, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't get to <laughs> orange block either. Yeah, there, there, there's, uh, there's certainly a lot, and there's like a lot. There's a lot of puzzle here, and it's open source. So if you want to like make new levels. Fuck, man, like, you can't. It's easy as shit. <laughs> Oops. That's a mess. <laughs> yeah, no, this the, this particular map here, the, this was the one that I couldn't figure out until I stopped recording, went to pee, came back, and went, went wait a second. There's the, the roof of this little contained area is made of glass. Uh, right. Yeah. I get it now. I, I, guess, I guess one thing was, I wasn't <laughs> expecting how Minecrafty this game is in terms of, like, block positioning, because mm -hmm. there's very, very, very much, like, like, you, you don't need, uh, once you actually get stuff, like, standing on the blocks, you don't need supports. So, yep. especially in the later levels, there's a lot of, like, let me build this structure that lets me put my blue block in the actual place I need it to, and then mm -hmm. you clear off the orange <laughs> blocks, and then the beams continue. It's, like... You, you, it is, it is not a passive puzzle game by any stretch of the imagination, which I really do appreciate. Um, and I mean, it does it, require a little bit of precision because how many times did you put the block, um, one yeah. square over too far? Like, a like, all right. Yeah. But precisely and like, because it, it needs that precision, it's very good to have like the Minecraft style of clearly defined mm -hmm. voxel size and it can only be in a certain coordinate. Yeah, I, I, on, honestly, I think like especially for for an open source game, this is this is very good. this is very high quality. The puzzles are well thought. It out. is. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, tw tw twenty bucks is a little steep, but again, 
the source is available and you like uh, i i always i always like consider a game monetarily worth it if like i spend i can uh earn back its purchase price at like minimum wage mm-hmm. i spend an hour trying to get through the first five levels of this game you will get your money's worth what if, what if we made the lasers i don't know fatal <laughs> what, what, what uh, you I, I imagine in levels like this, this that could be a bit of an issue. No, Pedro, because then we build in a limbo mechanic. <laughs> we we need a VR you limbo mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> where where you need to put on the headset and then just lean back all the way. Exactly, all mixed the reality, way. baby. Yeah, just em- empty style. All right. Well, coming up next, remember Dennis, the uh, achievement guy. He's back. He's got Uh-oh. some stuff to tell us. All right. Time to bring on the hate. Yeah. Chances are, if you hate that this particular show is coming to an end, there's something just as wrong with your brain as there is with ours. Does the Wayland Project have a mascot? The who? Wayland. It should be the Xenomorph, Uh, right? Like Wayland Yutani? Yutani, yeah. Uh, no, uh, it, it, it just that like little W the with yeah, the yellow yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, Wayland, it'll fuck your face. <laughs> call, call, call us Calabra. <laughs> That's Wayland with an E, though. <laughs> Shh, doesn't matter. Yeah. I got a Sharpie. We can... <laughs> yeah, no, no, no one cares. And the people who do, fuck their faces. Okay. Uh, so with that particular transition, <laughs> uh, you can go and fuck our faces on uh, LinuxGameCast.com. There's a contact button. Yeah, it's that kind of contact. Uh, you just uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page. There's a form you got to fill if oh, you want to send some hate mail. You know, like the little JavaScript thing pop-ups that make you wait. We're going to click contact, make it go three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, just a captcha, but it just like doesn't even send it to anything. <laughs> But a capture that just fails whenever you hit submit. It no, just, no, like, the, the, the recapture failed. <laughs> you can literally click close and it won't stop you. But people will st- <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, that's the best way to get in touch. Uh, of course, if you're a uh, Patreon, uh, uh, our supporter, a patron on Patreon, there you go. Um, you can absolutely send us a message there or you can leave a YouTube comment that's um, Spotify. Spotify, yes. You can leave us voice voice messages on Spotify. Technically correct, yes, you can. (laughs) We've we've, we've been trying to, I don't know, we've given up on trying to push for that. I still think there's some good content we can farm out of voicemails. There is, man. There is. uh, We got a phone number, but fuck, I'll farm over what it is. (laughs) It's probably some (laughs) telesex line. (laughs) No, I know we still have it because like once every three months, Google's like, you don't ever use this. I'm like, fine. So I have this one text conversation. With that number that just says meep, moop, beep, with, with, with like yourself, that. yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, bu- so bu- 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 we <laughs> talked about. Uh, we had this guy in the show, didn't we, Jordan? Yeah. So uh, Dennis, uh, you might know him from uh, the Open Source Achievement Project. He's also working on resurrecting a bunch of games. Uh, and he writes in. He says, "Thanks for having me on for the Mojo Tron Kickstarter last year. Unfortunately, the Kickstarter failed. I released mm. the game at Dual uh, Dulce Itch.io. Regardless." I've also continued around to play or continued to play around with other open source games. Recently, I did a makeover to Shippy 1984. I decided to Doesn't give it a sound like a look. dystopian Amazon warehouse. Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, if you search and look for Shippy 1984 cute, you should be able to find the video I did. I made it possible to switch between the original graphics and the new look on the title screen. It was a really effective demonstration of what open source can do at a science fest that my local Linux group attended. Well, that's kind of neat. It's always good to hear that's from Dennis. Very good. Yeah. yeah. There he goes. <laughs> he's, he's angry. He's angry at the arcade box. So this is the new show. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're, th- they're... those are the original graphics. Those oh, are and, the and, new and, graphics. And now there's anime girls. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's the cute bit. I I assume. Two. Oh, um, t- we two are being players? invaded. Are you sure? Oh no, Invader Pie. Uh, yeah. Step Step Invader. I don't know. Um... <laughs> invader Senpai. <laughs> no Frieza Domo Yamate. <laughs> But I mean that, that that's cool. You know, it's always it's always nice to see uh, people go and like try to revitalize old games, add some more stuff to them. And Dennis is a cool guy. Uh, hopefully, it has like support for the Fediverse uh, open source achievement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do want to see more people like get the word out. Like having an open source cross platform achievement system is such a good idea. Mm-hmm. 
It just is. And like then it. people will point out, oh, God Galaxy already does that, and fuck God Galaxy, and they're I said cross the Epic Games. The Epic Games Store actually <laughs> mandates it. So if you want to like support the most amount of stuff with the least amount of effort, Five. achievements. <laughs> <laughs> That's if you want to launder some money with uh, card games. Who, does, who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't want like briefcases full of illicit cash? I know I do. Wet from stinky selling, cash. Uh, That's all. Pedro trading has. cards from random video. Uh, we're, we're sitting over here with our freshly laundered um, ring, uh, rain scented cash that is yeah for, you yeah. know it's great. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it smells great and it spends good. That's the yeah. important thing. Your moldy wet cash, man. Give your give your cash a bath. That's a weird. Ca- no, it, 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 it's, it's our it's our new product, cash cleaners. We we take your money and then we clean it, and then we give you something back. You know what? Probably not what you wanted, but okay, something. N- now I want to know the legality of it because the currency here is still made out of like a cotton organic yeah. fiber. It's not plastic yet. I wonder if I could really start a money laundering service. Where where you dry clean the bills? Right, yeah. legitimately wa- wash money. <laughs> <laughs> just just out, out of a slogan. Seriously, trust me, it's legit. Actual money laundering. <laughs> Totes legit. Yeah. Dude. Just, you know, you just, just like have have the SEC cop just like show up and just like hang out there, just be like, hey man, just come on. Oh yeah, just just to be walking out of the door behind him, going, "Fucking told you." Yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, that's just a washing machine back there. Yeah. Did your place ship in 1984? Like, I I, this is the first I've ever heard about it. I'm, I'm not up to speed on like classic. Uh, no, I, I, closest game to that I played was uh, Super Space Invaders on the Master System. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, it definitely Fred gives me Darby? some uh, Space Invaders vibes. Yeah, the, 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 they have like angry hats. They're, they're fezzes. Ah. Oh, they're little smiley people inside the ship, right? Yeah, that's that's the cute. It's so cute. <laughs> All right, <laughs> pretty cool, man. I'm down with it. And copyright is... 2004 by Crappy Games. There it is. Mo- mobile games with polyamory. Okay, neat. Hey, yeah. FedoraProject.org. Reskin to yeah. make it cute. Aw. Yeah, uh, that's. Uh, I guess Dennis made a blog post there too. That's cool. Yep. Pretty decent. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we're gonna get out of here. Thanks for showing up. You can always catch us live at uh, eight thirty. Eastern, right here on Twitch, or if you're a patron, come hop in the pre pre super chosen if you'd like to join in on that. But until next week, let's go ahead. Cue that music. You can always find me. I, I'm still doing the Twitter thing. I'm over on Twitter because that's where I get like a lot of like news sources and stuff. And I post I posted a funny picture today. I think. I should have. Go find out. At Vin <laughs> Stone. On Twitter.com or just at Vin on our federated timeline, which is mass.linuxgamecast. Dot com, which is something like somebody followed me on Mastodon like last week or something like, hey, I heard you talk about that. I'm following you now. I'm like, cool. That's neat. I'm Jordan. You can find the cute version of me on Mastodon at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com or you can find the sultry, sexy, X-rated version of me on Twitter.com uh, slash The Burning Fool, I guess. Yeah, at The Burning Fool. And technically, Jordan's the one who manages the only fan, so you can find him there too. Mm. Probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> You, uh, if you would like to people are, look people at are someone asking who's... for Pedro Rule Thirty Four, actually, where can they find that? Uh, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> what was the picture this week? You don't want to see P- Pony Pedro. under Pony here. Pedro. Uh, the uh, Neverwinter Nights T-shirt is very nice. Thank you, Nori. Uh, the um, best way to follow me is on Twitter at unaccounted for f o u r. Uh, you can absolutely follow me on Mastodon at unaccounted for with the actual number four at the end at mass.linuxgamecast.com but I, I don't go there very often I don't post anything there at all <laughs> yeah that pony Pedro man uh, yeah. Pe- people close their eyes and they just see Pedro and are compelled to draw I don't understand this it well is. my face did get seared onto someone's uh, TV because they left a uh, YouTube playlist going and it froze at some point and my face was just there. So now whenever they turn off their TV, my face is still glowing. Well, they cut it and, off. They saw that and they threw something through it. I mean, it was yeah. like, well, nope. you, you know, so, in, in, a, in a thousand years when like the archaeologists excavate it, they turn it on. They're like, ah, this is cursed. Cool. We're burying this back in the pit <laughs> where we found it. That's got an actual ghost. 
<laughs> Aromatic Dev, thanks for the five gift subs. We got to roll some credits. Boom. Yeah. Get out of here. Optimus Incorrectness Primal Prime Bad CGI. <laughs> car, car. I'm a dinosaur. Yeah. Bok Bok. T Rex, baby. Let's thank well, the people got... making this possible. Start DXL. with their advisors. Yeah, D DXL. It's D I don't know what number yeah. DXL oh. is. This one if I quit it's doing them. DXL. D's nuts. Omega, Omega Star Third. Third. We got our executive That's producers, Barbat, Scott Michaud, <laughs> Tom McCast, Mike G, Drummer, Kohaku Pebble, Tomash Hakim, David Eshep, and our little Nikki fans, Super Death Stoat, Empty, Glorious Egg Roll, and Blast Blah. With Z Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Nubin, Darkwing, System T, Denzing Joe, Ogi One, Kyrillo, and Fute. Plenty of Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romo, Marcin, Rene, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Chris, Steve, Jill, Benjamin, Doom, Two, Wad, Stephen, Dirty Dean, Back, Gametron, Dodgers, Anthrus Gaming, Ro, and Fox Dog, Oil of Hope, Jalad, Piper, and Aromatic Gav. Thank you again. Well, thank you many, 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 many chairlings like Christopher and Simcha and uh, Door to Door Geek. <laughs> Ertain, what about Rosa Ego? Water, Jonas Rule, Minus Nine, Evandra, Monica, you know it, Daniel, Daniel Alex, Biatko, Strider, Strider, Rookie, Sacred Egg, Sacred Egg, Biatko, D Spec, D Spec, and Replay Gaming, PT, and, and Mark, Biotkos. and Live It. Respect the D Spec. <laughs> Carl, Mike, or Ethereum Linux New World is not close. John Eshep, Gametron, you know it, DSN Joe, and Aromatic Dev. Thank you for supporting. You fuckers. We do. You're all Here. truly wonderful. You fine, upstanding cannibals. <laughs> Until next week, ladies and gentlemen. Toodles. Toodles? Toodles. Toodles. <laughs> Toodles. Toodle <-oo>. Bye de bye. <laughs> Teedly <-dee. laughs> Hey Homer. Hey Dun Homer, I can see your new Santa. We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>